Welcome to the only daily research news video report, your research business daily report. Well, we're sponsored today and this week by Socratic Technologies, whose proprietary tools and methodologies tackle marketing complexities so that you can make more confident business decisions. Well, as you can clearly see, I am not in my usual studio surroundings in Chicago. In actuality, my wife and I have journeyed to Israel to join my daughter and her husband as we all await the imminent arrival of our second grandchild. But you've come to expect news insights and commentary from RBDR, and we're not going to disappoint you. We read in a column by Peter Paschal on Mashable.com a couple of weeks ago a story that was running wild about the internet. A young woman apparently was assaulted while wearing Google Glass in a bar in San Francisco because patrons thought she was recording them. Now, Taluna has a study that says 72% of consumers say they will not wear Google Glass. Their privacy concerns aren't as direct as the story I just told you, but they fear that hackers might access personal data and then reveal personal information, including their locations. It's going to be interesting to watch what Google can piece together in explaining to consumers things that will allay their present concerns. We wanted to spotlight today Taluna Vice President of Online Panels, Julie Paul. And we invited her to share details that may not be fully understood by any client that is yet to start their own online community. And here's what Julie had to tell us. Uh, Bob, it would probably take about six to eight weeks when it's all said and done. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. Yeah, so. what, what does go into it? Um, well, you, there's a few things. You need to build um, a website, a web portal where the community members can come to. Uh, you need to build a, a database element um, housing all of the profile information that you would collect when people join the community. Um, and then you really need um, a research plan or, or a plan of engagement, how you're going to go forward with making sure these people stay engaged and, and what kind of research are you going to do with it. For a branded panel, anywhere between, say, fifty dollars and $80,000 for the first year, including setup costs and so on. For an unbranded panel where you don't have a red readily uh, supply of... Um, uh, of people to recruit from, you're probably looking at more in the hundred to hundred twenty thousand dollar range, depending on who you're recruiting for the All community. Right. Branded panel, I'd say, is probably the hotter topic, um, but the unbranded one is equally important because it gives you that competitive information that you're not going to get from your customers. So both are important, but there's different ways of 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 getting the information. We would recommend to clients to build a branded panel with their customers and then to get that sort of unbranded viewpoint to use one of the larger panels like the Toluna Access Panel or, or another large panel. Is the idea to have them run in parallel with each other? Yes, um, because oftentimes clients will have very specific research they want to do with their customers, but then there'll be occasional times where, oh, gee, I wish I knew what the non-customers thought. And so then you want to have that access to that non-customer panel to be able to pull that and do it simultaneously. The online panels and community panels, it's not the new kid on the block anymore, and I think that they, um, but they're here to stay for a few reasons. We found that it brings the client organization together. So you have, a, say, a research manager, a brand manager, uh, a social media director, and a marketing manager all accessing this one community. So it helps them bridge a gap between all of their different initiatives. So that's one reason. Uh, benefit. Another one is it brings together a whole list of different kinds of data. So you would have um, your uh, profiling data. When you recruit people, you're asking them all about their demographics. That would be in the database. Adding to that, you would have potentially transactional or CRM data that's coming from the client's database. You could merge that in. You have survey-based data that you're collecting ongoing for months or years. And then in today's day, you also have social media data. So if we can connect with, a, say, a client's fan page on Facebook, we can actually pull in all of that Facebook profiling data how often, that's available. How often can you do that, Julie? Um, you do it usually at the uh, always at the recruitment phase. So, and the recruitment phase can go on forever. It can be continuous. So, if you've got a million fans on your fan 
page on Facebook. We could connect to the community to that. And then as fans continually join your fan page, they can also join the community. And then we pull in all their in information, like what other brands do they like? You know, what's their religion? What's their, all of the different um, things that you say on Facebook and do on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would think that one of the big savings in setting up the panel is getting the names directly from the client. Yes, exactly. So when we talk about a building a branded community, um, it's less expensive than building an unbranded community because we're able to get the client to provide email lists of their customers, uh, access to their website, access to their Facebook fan page, those kinds of places where we can recruit for free in a, in, in a sense. Okay. Yeah. What separates a good branded uh, community from a great one? Good question. Um, the, I would say a great one is really one where the community is highly engaged. So the members of the community are interested in the brand. They're interested in doing the research. You get good response rates on surveys. You get good participation in discussions. Is that just a matter of having a really good moderator or is there much more to it than that? I would say... A good moderator is a good start, but what's more important is having the brand uh, involved. The more involved the brand is, so the brand manager or an executive at the company who is willing to, let's say, blog on the community site to ask the questions themselves, they will get much more richer information and much more engagement because now the community members really go, oh, this brand is really listening to me, and they're, I'm connecting directly with them. That makes it sound like it's very strategic and very tactical. Is it more one than the other? Um, uh, both. I would say on a strategic level, we always recommend that the client be the one to be the moderator and to really get their hands dirty and get in there. More importantly, I would say, than the tactical having that kind of moderator education. I mean, we could, they could learn how to ask the right questions, but you can't have, you can't teach somebody how to be passionate about the brand. They have to have that in them. Mm -hmm. So we find the most successful communities are the ones where the clients uh, really engage themselves and not just hire a community manager to do that. Thanks, Julie, for your time and expertise. And you can email her at julie.paul at toluna.com. That's your Research Business Daily Report sponsored by Socratic Technologies, whose proprietary tools and methodologies tackle marketing complexities so that you can make more confident business decisions. We hope you have a great research day and that you do join us again tomorrow.